I just know as soon as I start filming this video, Peach is gonna come over here and nuzzle my tripod and possibly knock it over. Oh, Ducky's coming too. The dogs are out, the hogs are out. It's a beautiful 60 degree day today. Yeah, maybe just leave the tripod. I would say not really a snack, not really necessary to even interact with at all. Nope, okay. I'm getting my big belly up into the bed of this truck. I'm Mrs. Meeseeks, look at me. 29 weeks. Okay, I'm gonna film in here, away from my hogs who are talking over the tripod again. All right, honestly, this is quite a nice shot in the bed of this truck here. They're literally rocking the boat. They're rocking the truck right now because they're itching themselves on it. We're just gonna have to deal with this. It's a free-ranging hog life, okay? Our pigs free-range during the day. They go in their pen securely at night and they love the 60 degree weather. It's been incredible. So they've been sunbathing, scratching themselves, wandering around coming underneath the porch and hanging out and I was trying to film on the porch but they said no thank you it's fine I'm joining you here with my tea today to have a little tea time catch up with you um, as the intro of this vlog I've been having some more like struggles recently mentally with um, not wanting to show you the same mundane tasks or activities but i talked about that on my patreon today and somebody commented and was just like we all have a mundane life pretty much and i think that you know a lot of what you guys enjoy about my videos and especially what you said in the comments of like my nesting and spiraling vlog that i did when i was just being really hard on myself and talking about that in the video so many of you were like i enjoy your videos because they're relatable and not like manicured or full of things that are unattainable to me and so just share more of that because that's what we want to see and don't be too hard on yourself and I'm like thanks for the reminder it's always a nice reminder to get so cheers to you and thanks for watching I'll do a brief catch up with you guys since the last video what was the last video oh my pregnancy Q&A and second trimester update so that was nice to film and you guys seem to enjoy it I enjoy filming pregnancy related content um, I just don't want to overwhelm you with it I was actually talking about this on a call with my management today because we were just talking about content and maternity leave which I still don't know what my maternity leave is gonna look like at least right now I'm roughly planning on taking off the whole month of June and my mom's coming up mid-May so I'm just thinking about like content ideas for that time if I'm gonna batch film stuff or what but that's how I got on this topic with them and was talking about how similar to when I was planning the wedding it's not like most of my viewers at that time were also planning a wedding I mean I'm sure it was helpful to those of you who were or who went back to that content and watched it after you know I filmed it because you then got married or engaged or whatever and you needed that content so the reason that I film the pregnancy stuff is like maybe it's not relevant to you now but it could be down the line and you can always come back to it so it's not like a bad thing to talk about pregnancy a lot um, because it is something that's super relevant in my life and even those of you who are like I'm not pregnant you still enjoy watching the pregnancy content because you know that like yeah life circumstance will change and that will either be you someday or you have genuinely no interest in it and probably will never have kids but you're still like I'm happy for you so you know I think that with my content and everything and the way that I think about things overwhelming you with content is just like not really something I need to worry about because I should just create what's relevant to me at the time and it'll resonate with either who needs to hear it or you know they'll find it down the line so that's something that I've been focusing on but yeah other than all of those things you know life has just been <laughs> it's regular mundane swing of things since it's been so nice out I mean we did have snow last weekend it was actually on the day that Finley and I had a meetup it was very impromptu we had a meetup in Brattleboro at the Harris Hill ski jump and I just genuinely was like I don't know who's gonna show up we announced this like a couple of days before you know the meetup was happening and people drove from like as far as two hours away and we had a lot of people there and it was very cute and pure I'll put a photo on the screen shout out to you if you came we had a lovely day with those folks and we like hung out in the park and just sat in our little lawn chair
chairs and it was just like a nice little camping vibe and you know I think that this is something that we were talking about at the meetup but like that's just something that you don't really do very often like imagine you know <laughs> telling your friends like yeah I'm gonna drive to this random field and meet a youtuber that I've been watching since I was in middle school or something like that like people are for the most part like okay <laughs> it's like you know what your parents tell you not to do or whatever like don't meet strangers from the internet but like sometimes when you do it and you take the leap even if you know there were some people who drove out alone and um, I just appreciate that so much that people will like take the jump just to go and hang out with like-minded folks and we all had a great time and we hope to do more of those in the future I know that we'll have a baby in a couple of months but obviously it would be nice to bring her around or you know do more of them while we are are just two solo adults uh, for the time being so maybe we'll do more and I'll try to keep you guys more in the loop because I didn't really talk about it on YouTube I just posted about it on my Instagram at the time but yeah that was really great and on that day it started like randomly raining during the meetup and then snowing and we were like what the hell it was just 60 yesterday just spring things just Vermont things but you know I've been hearing the geese fly over to the pond that's near our house and of course now that it's getting warmer out we're thinking a lot more about landscaping and plants and so somebody asked me that um, as like a video suggestion and I did very briefly talk about land plans I think when we first moved into this house and all of this is like predicated on getting a tractor and for a while we were thinking about getting an electric tractor and it just ended up not working out like the one that we were looking into to. And so now we're looking at other options and brands and talking to people locally who have tractors and love them, you know, like where did you get it and which model do you like and where do you fill up on gas for it and all that kind of stuff and um, how much is it to, you know, not only purchase but to like maintain a vehicle of that size because we have a riding lawnmower but that's like our biggest vehicle other than, you know, our cars. But anyway, so that's kind of what's been up with us and we as like a rough plan, plan to move to, you know, doing more outdoor landscaping and focusing on that in the spring and summertime, especially with the bedroom wrapping up. It's like, all right, we can tie this up in a pretty little bow, move on to outdoor projects because it's so nice to be outside and prep the garden beds and figure out where we're gonna plant an orchard and all that kind of stuff because so much of my past content that um, I know you guys really love and really feeds my soul is homesteading content. And right now we just haven't really been focusing on like the homesteading outdoor Part of things um, it's more just been like getting the house in shape to a standard that is good for us so it's been a lot of focus there but I just wanted to kind of film like a random intro today talk to you about kind of what's been on the old noggin and start off a vlog we have a childbirth ed class later I packed a ton of snacks for it so maybe I'll show you our lunchbox that we're gonna bring to class because it's like three hours long I'm gonna bring my little notebook take all my notes have that. I'm not gonna like film the class, um, but I'll, you know, share with you before or after our thoughts about it. And I have a telehealth visit today with one of my midwives and I'll take that appointment in the car on the way to the childbirth ed class. So just pregnant things, <laughs> you know, things are going on, things are happening. And other than that, my life has literally just been full of cleaning, organizing, nesting, and all of the stuff that I've been showing you in past videos. And that's why I was a little bit in my head being like, well, I can't film another vlog of just all the same stuff but then at the same time it's like this is my life now so um let's just share whatever's on my mind anyway that's what's crackalacking with me cheers to you y'all here's what i'm packing in my lunch box for the childbirth ed class tonight um some stuff for me some stuff for finley i'm obviously just gonna bring like my giant bottle of water as well but i have some cashews some hummus celery and bell pepper sticks i just made some chia pudding this morning so it's just gonna continue to you know expand a little bit in the fridge but it's just half a cup of chia seeds a can of coconut milk and then I like mixed it all together in a mixing bowl and then split it into two mason jars with cinnamon and you can add whatever sweetener you want to it as well. Obviously cinnamon's optional too, I just love cinnamon. And then two of these buffalo snack sticks for Finley. I got these at the co-op for him, they're like from a local New Hampshire farm in Warner. And then for me, 
two Organic Valley cheese sticks, honey. And then I just have my spoon in here for my um, chia pudding. It may seem a little OD, but you know, mama gets hungry, so you never know. I just figured these are all more filling snacks than like a muffin or something like that to bring. So we're trying to stay satiated for the class. Imagine I bring my birth ball to sit on instead of a chair. It's like held at a local library. I'm like, or I roll my birth ball in holding my little lunch box in my Stanley. Oh, that would be absurd. I'm not gonna do that. I was just making a joke. Damn it, forgot to put my spoon in there. Shit. Back in the fridge she goes till we have to leave. That's Peachy snoring outside. I have the front door open since it's such a nice day. But I wanted to sit down for a second in my kitchen and just say that something that's been on my mind recently is just getting ideas going for meal prepping. That's what I've been very into in my nesting urges currently. Um, and I know that most people meal prep around like 36 weeks and they start like putting stuff in the freezer, but I'm just in the recipe testing phase right now of figuring out what would be good for us to freeze for postpartum. So if you have any suggestions suggestions of that like even just stuff for Finley that like has meat in it too you could suggest because my mom's gonna be here so she'll like make whatever for us so yeah any recipe suggestions down below are welcomed I'm thinking I'll definitely freeze the spinach and feta egg cups that I made the other day I've been having one a day with my morning coffee as like protein before the caffeine and ugh, I love her work so I'll definitely make more of those and they're so easy you literally just put a sprinkle of feta and then a sprinkle of chopped spinach on top and then like whisk together like six or seven eggs and then fill them up in muffin tins bake them for 20 minutes or less and you're done so those are a major slay and i've really been enjoying those just like easy peasy stuff so if you have gone through postpartum and you really enjoyed having like certain recipes in your freezer please let me know what those were i'm thinking also like stews and you know more traditional like postpartum healing meals I would like to have as well. This book, The First 40 Days, is on my baby registry, so fingers crossed that we get it. If we don't, I'll just buy it. But it has like traditional recipes that people across many cultures use for postpartum healing, and I think that that will really come in handy for us as well for meal prep ideas. Okay, let's go about our silly little tasks. Where are my very hungry dogs in this house? Remember in the first trimester when I couldn't do this without getting sick? For lunch today, inside of my sheep yogurt container, cause I was at the end of it anyway, I put chia seeds, granola. We love the kind granola that has like protein in it. It's like the peanut butter one that's gluten free and then frozen fruit. So there's like strawberries, blueberries. It looks really gross, but it's terrific. So. Well, it, I don't know if this is lunch. This is more like a snack. Well, I gotta tell you brothers, that was terrific. And I'm happy I didn't have to dirty a bowl. Why use bowl when fewer dish do trick? I recently got these magnetic shelves for the side of our fridge to get all of my supplements off the counter. And let me tell you, it has been truly revolutionary for me. So I really just wanted to rave about these bad boys because they change them a lot. You can probably use them as spice racks too, which I may have to get more of if I'm gonna do the spice rack thing. I don't like where my spice rack is now, but that's a project for another day. Move that ass. But it's move that bus. You guys remember? Oh God, I can't vlog until the squeak's gone. Sometimes she'd just be squeaking for a little bit and then she stops. Okay, the treadmill quieted down, but I'm walking my mile. I walk a mile every day. Walk a mile in these little batons, except I'm wearing my orthopedic shoes. <laughs> and um, you know, also speaking of shoes and feet and such, when I was outside eating my lunch before this, I decided to take just like a little loop, you know, in the driveway, just kind of meandering around looking for the pigs and I found them on the side of the house and I got distracted while I was walking looked at them rolled my ankle <laughs> but it's okay because I'm walking it off now and it's actually not feeling too terrible but 
why am I like this? You know what I mean? Just silly willy things. I wanted to walk my mile though before we go to the childbirth ed class because I know honestly later tonight once we get home because it's like a far drive away. It's down in Massachusetts like an hour away. I know that I won't want to do it when I get home. I'll probably just want to you know eat something and hit the damn hay. I actually think afterwards we might have to go to Home Depot for some renovation things but either way I'm walking it now and slaying. I've upped my time actually or my speed or whatever to like basically three miles an hour. I at least start strong and then kind of dwindle it from there. But most of the time on the treadmill, I'll watch either a vlog or Sex in the City or, you know, some kind of a podcast or something. I've been loving, obsessed with Brooke Averick. Or is it Averick? But I really like her podcast. And also now that I'm in my third trimester, I got a belly band and I've been really enjoying it, especially on the treadmill because it alleviates a lot of the like baby weight from being on my back. And so I don't have as much like back pain and it's nice. Also, yeah, I already stripped my shirt off and I'm just walking in my damn nursing bra. <laughs> Goodbye. One mile or so done. Let's turn this bad boy off and go pack for class. I have to grab my lunch box. I gotta find a journal and I gotta dry off my armpits cause <laughs> mom broke a sweat. We're going to get dinner after our class. It was very educational and great. Shrimp shish kebabs for me and some veggies. And a little lamb shank for Finley. Getting your bandana on. I've been coming over to this chair in the mornings to cuddle and read my book and it looks like somebody beat me to it this morning. Huh, Larry? You really love your bowl chair. We can do some cuddling and we'll read our Sally Rooney. I'm getting to the end of this book. Good morning, folks. I'm in the car and I'm about to head down to Massachusetts to pick up something off of Facebook Marketplace. And it's a rocking chair for our nursery. And well, we're room sharing, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's going to be for the baby. And um, yeah, I mean, I posted about this on Instagram yesterday, just trying to gather some opinions because there is a lot of frustrations that I have with the level of consumerism that's attached to having a child. And it can be really overwhelming when you've never had a baby before and you don't have anything and you have to, you know, make a list of basically like what's necessary to start and, you know, support your child. And a lot of those things are luxuries, but people make them feel as though they're like needed, you know, and in videos that you watch or just when somebody is like doing a little tour of a room or something you're like oh I gotta get that now and all of the options are like insanely expensive and that's how I feel about nursing chairs <laughs> like the modern glider and rocker for a baby is so insanely expensive at least the ones that are on my registry website and I just don't really want one of those you know what I mean I'm like they're not really my taste. And anyway, this is all just to say yesterday I posted on Instagram being like, if you have a nursing chair that you really love, where did you get it? You know, did you get it on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace? A lot of people said that they had hand-me-down rocking chairs and then they just put pillows on them or, you know, some kind of a cushion or something. And I've been eyeing this rocking chair at a store in Greenfield for a while and they put the listing like, you know, sometimes businesses will do that on Facebook Marketplace, like they'll list their product on Facebook Marketplace so it reaches a wider audience than just the patrons that come into the store. So I found a chair on there and I'm going to go get it from this lady. But yeah, I just wanted to say that because it's so funny reading through some of the responses on Instagram. Like some people are like, I loved my glider. They're definitely, you know, number one thing that you need for a baby. But it's just such a thing where you have to remember that's that person's experience. And some other people were like, honestly, I preferred just like laying down and bed and slipping my boob out you know what I mean or like doing it on the couch or <laughs> in a different area so it's not like actually that necessary for every single person who has ever birthed <laughs> a child anyway um that's just my morning tangent today I got my coffee and my protein shake in this bad boy and we're gonna head down to MA and probably listen to Throne of Glass I'm like I don't know I think I have like three hours left or something like that but it's getting a little slow for me honey I need it to pick up the pace. Yeah, I don't know, I have to put my 
seats down. Total success getting my new nursing chair. And now I'm at the old Home Depot and I have to pick up a little paint pen for Finley. We were gonna do this last night, but we didn't end up going because we went to dinner instead. Honestly, where we went out to dinner was really good. It was called Nadim's Mediterranean in Springfield, MA. Well, that was a flop. Normally Home Depot is not a flop, but <laughs> they don't have paint pens. They just have stain pens in stock. So we don't need that. I was literally right around the Home Depot anyway. So I don't really mind checking. Finley was like, I'm sorry for wasting your time. I'm like, it's fine, honey. I'm going to head back home now with my new chair and I might try to like clean the cushions. Lately, when I light my incense, I've been closing my eyes and setting an intention behind it as nerdy and woo woo as it seems. It's been nice and sometimes they even come true. Lovely. I'm writing a book review so I think I'm gonna put on a little record to listen to in the meantime. I've been very into this record and just this band in general. If you play Fallout 4 chances are you've probably heard them. Having my tea and listening to my little record. Oldies are so good. I used to listen to the oldies all the time. Maybe I'm just re-entering that era right now. But I wanted to say, because I didn't really talk about it too much later on yesterday, after the class, I just said like, we learned so much. But at our childbirth ed class, I brought like a little notebook to take notes. And then she was basically like, you don't need to take notes for this class. Like I would prefer that you just stay present and try to absorb the information and we'll do exercises and, you know, just try to connect with one another really, which I appreciated because it made it so it wasn't like, okay, I'm watching the projector and like writing down these notes intensely. Cause it's like, when you're in active labor, what are you gonna be doing? Reading notes? Probably not. But you know, I can paste these around <laughs> my room or something when I am going into labor. And the main exercises she had us do was write down what distracts us and what relaxes us. So some examples, booping the dog snoots, watching a show, going for a walk, trying to bake or cook. She talked a lot about like the act of repeated movements, like hand washing a floor on your knees or like, ironing or like kneading bread or something to get you through like early contraction feelings um, or you know to distract you could hold a comb in your hand where like the little prickle parts would be on the palm of your hand and it would like help you have that little <laughs> we talked a lot about just like relieving pressure from certain areas with like you know the help of your partners hands on your sacrum or yeah with like the comb in the hand or like rubbing a tennis ball on your back or something. And then obviously also the power of laughter we talked a lot about as well. And then for relaxing things, this was kind of just like whatever was relaxing to us. And a lot of people had the same answers, but a lot of people had different answers that I was like, oh, I don't do that. But you know, slay, if you crochet in a blanket and that relaxes you, that's great. There was like five couples total in the class. So it was cute. And we met some nice folks, but it was like, you know, Know, the greater Massachusetts area. So some people similar to us had road tripped a little bit to go there. And we do have a follow-up class for two hours on Zoom this following Tuesday. So we'll get to see all of those people again. But there was one couple in particular where Finley and I both were like, they were our favorite. <laughs> so we were like, looking forward to talking to you on Zoom. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, the things that relax me are like, you know, essential oil diffuser. We went over the ones that are like good for labor, like lavender peppermint frankincense clary sage having a heating pad on your back an eye mask that like helps you with sensory deprivation one that would really block out the light and I do have one like that that I use to go to sleep at night laughter again <laughs> for relaxation and um, taking a bath or a shower and a lot of home births that I watch people will like go into the shower or be in their birthing tub and have you know their partner or midwife or something have a washcloth that they fill with water and then you know kind of squeeze over their back and just like hydrotherapy in general i feel like a lot of people enjoy and then also relaxation stuff i put listening to a record cuddling the dogs in finley and lying in the sunshine so i'm gonna put these in our bedroom you know when the time comes for her to arrive but it was nice to just like have that activity to do but we got some handouts with just you know various things on 
and I'm talking about the power of prolactin and adrenaline and endorphins, but then also oxytocin, which your body naturally creates during labor. And then Finley got a little support person checklist for comfort measures during labor. And we also went over, you know, like birthing positions and stuff like that. And then this was kind of fun. This is like a little coloring sheet of a dilation chart. So this would be fully dilated 10 centimeters down here. It was fun. I didn't feel as though it was, you know, like a, a woo woo class or anything like that. Like we talked about such a wide variety and range of things. And what was really great too is like, you know, I was there as a home birth client. Two of the couples who were there were going to be birthing, or maybe three of the couples were going to be birthing at a birth center. And then one couple was having a hospital birth unmedicated. And then also three of us were first time birthers and two of the other people had already had children before one of the moms there was on her fifth pregnancy and she was going the natural route for the first time and so she was like having her partner there with her and everything just kind of to like learn the ropes of how like different it would be for them to do a birth center compared to a hospital and that was like an interesting thing to hear them discuss and joke around about um, because obviously it is like an adjustment it was just really cool and we were definitely the youngest ones there i feel like most of the couples were in their like mid 30s if i had to guess we had a good dinner afterwards and we talked about all the things and now i'm live laugh loving today it's very rainy out so that's why i'm kind of just having like a chill day with my records and my incense and my books and my tea you know <laughs> I'm in my tea era as well right now. But that's what's up with me. I think today I might do something really boring and get some of my tax stuff done, like just the annoying self-employed things of gathering forms and putting them all into a separate folder to keep track of. Normally I'm pretty good about that throughout the year, but there are some things that I need to just gather. So might do some of that. But I was going to say, um, I just wrote and posted a review for this on my Goodreads as well as my Bookstagram. If you're interested in reading my thoughts on this, spoiler alert, loved it. And so I think I'm gonna read another Sally Rooney book afterwards, because this is her newest book. I loved Normal People, I loved Conversations with Friends, and now I'm going to read Beautiful World, Where Are You? I just feel like she has such a unique way of writing that to me is very admirable and it's very relatable and I just enjoy reading her work. It feels casual and attainable and not like, over my head. I got kind of frustrated with the last book that I read before this, A Certain Hunger, because I was just like, I literally have to look up a word every single page almost. <laughs> like, well, that's kind of dramatic, but it was like every chapter at least. I would have to look up a word and it just felt so out of my grasp. And don't get me wrong, love learning new things, love learning vocabulary words, you know what I mean? But it just felt like the author had gone back and added in, you know, like fancier words <laughs> to the writing to make it seem, I don't know, more well thought out or something like that. And after I realized that I was just like, mm. This is like pissing me off, you know what I mean? And Sally Rooney does not do that. It's very like just chill, sometimes just, it feels like watching a show or something, which is I think why so many of her books have been adapted into TV because it's very conversational. It feels very nice and comforting to me. So she's my comfort author right now, aside from digesting all of the birth knowledge and listening to audiobooks about all of that and reading about, I don't know, diet things and all that kind of stuff when it comes to uh, childbirth. I'm also like still reading fiction because it's fun, obviously, and I don't want to overwhelm myself with just reading about labor and delivery for multiple months. All right, guys, sorry, I'm just hiding the tag, but I just got my um, baby shower dress, at least my possible baby shower dress that I've been eyeing on Hatch because I've loved everything that I've gotten from Hatch throughout my pregnancy. I feel like they make just like really good quality pregnancy clothes that last and are really cute. And I saw this dress on an ad on Instagram. I was actually talking about this in a secret vlog that I filmed for Patreon, but I was like, do I get the pink one or do I get the blue one? I also don't have a lot of like pink things, mainly because my skin is pretty pink toned and I've never been like a pink girly, like, oh, that color looks good on me. But honestly, I think it could be cute for the moment, but I was just laughing so hard putting this on because when I got the package and took it out of the little mailer, I was like, 
well, I'll try it, but this looks a little big. And of course, it's like the perfect size because <laughs> my boobs have grown so much and so is my belly, but I'll show you. Okay, this is her. Cute. Look at my little bump in it. Very nice. And it's like spacious enough for my boobs, I feel like, even if I did a boob scoop, I feel like it still looks good and my belly is gonna be even bigger. Our baby shower is like three and a half or so weeks away from when I'm filming this. So I'll have even more of a unit on me by then, but this is my bump at 29 weeks. And this is the little back. It's just like a tie back. I feel like it's good length, a good material. The lighting's kind of shitty because it's so gloomy outside today, but I just wanted to show you. So cute. I'm gonna send some photos to my sister. She helped me pick it up. Not the lighting being absolutely revolting right now. I'm up here, right? Eyes up here, camera. For some reason, when I put my hands up here, it just really readjusted. Well, it's because I blacked out that light. I'm watching Sex in the City. I'm walking my mile and I'm vibing, honey. And it's still not stopped raining. So I just have been thinking of stuff to do in the house that's pretty random, but needs to be done. Like we have a bunch of snowmen, sorry about my hand. We have a bunch of snowmen out on our mantle still because that was my like January, February decor. And I need to box them up and put them away. And the tax stuff has been taking hours out of my day collecting medical expenses and other various 1099s. <laughs> Casey Musgrave's new album is out and I just weeped so hard to dinner with friends. Love this woman, it's really good. <laughs> Little vibe switch. Salad party. I've come down to the basement today. I know that these things are gonna go up to the bedroom because this is Finley's dresser that he made for himself. Well, it's more of like a shelf, like these shelves go inside of the ring. And then we have a dresser covered by this moving blanket here as well that's gonna come up to the bedroom. But I was just kind of peeking back here being like, is there anything else back here? I cleaned out a bunch of storage bins very recently. I don't know where Finley put the stack of them. They're all over here with other random miscellaneous basement things. I think this should be big enough for my big snowman to fit into and I'll shove all the little ones around him. My mom, I think I said this around like the new year or whatever, but when we went home, my mom was like, I have all of these Christmas decorations that I'm getting rid of. Do you want any of them? And I was like, honestly, sure. So now we have like doubled our Christmas decor collection, but we have a big house, so I don't really mind. And honestly, I would prefer that they come to me and my future family than like, go to a donation site, you know? With a bunch of randos, I don't know. I'm rocking my gut out today, by the way, as uh, an outfit choice. It's a, an accessory, the bump. But actually, I just really wanted to wear this skirt again. I haven't worn it since like, I feel like the beginning of my pregnancy, like September or something. And today it's gonna be like 52. So I figured why the hell not put a little sweater on. And I have my little mushroom earrings on as well. I think we might end up just moving this upstairs to the bedroom because it used to be in our last bedroom. I've had this dresser for years and years. I've had it since like my LA apartment and I store my t-shirts in here, but I don't really, you know, I have a large t-shirt collection. It has this paper on top to protect it from, you know, basement things. But I'm like, I don't know. It's not completely full. My headbands are in here too. So part of me is like, is this a waste of space to bring up to the bedroom? But it would look really nice underneath our big window up there. I don't know. My biggest thing with wanting to possibly let go of this piece is just like the color of wood. It doesn't really match anything else. And of course we do, you know, like mismatched woods and stuff, but also at the same time, I'm like, I don't know, it just feels like a random piece that I'm ready to let go of. And since we have that other dresser that you guys can't really see back here behind our camping stuff. Um, I think maybe we'll just use that, but I also plan to use this dresser. Come down here, you crazy dog. I plan to use the top of this dresser for a changing table, like put the changing table pad on top of that for baby, and then use a lot of those dresser drawers for storing baby things, which I'm sure we'll have a lot of, you know, as the months go on. So maybe that will just be her dresser. Are you guys playing down here? Basement playtime and a basement party and a basement playtime. It's so fun. We're not really doing anything. I just came down here for the bin. I don't think it'll fit. I have to find a new home for your ass. Or we follow you. Shit. We just need a bigger bin for the whole family.
place this and this really bad, but we'll do that when we renovate this wing. I know that this is a really stupid way to clean brick. <laughs> so I looked it up and most people just use like dish soap in one of those. Honestly, we probably have a big brush that you would almost use on like livestock, like a horse or something, like a big scrubber brush. We probably have one out in the shed, but yeah, that's what most people use to clean brick. So I know that this is looking stupid, but I'm just doing a, a little wipe down before I redecorate this space. I think since we're approaching the end of wood stove season, I might put our fake plants back up here like we used to have in our organ house on the mantle. And I do think I could just like downsize it a bit and not put as much because we had a big, a little bit of a bigger space, I feel like, in Oregon. But I don't know where those fake plants are right now. So I know where the vases are because they're in the kitchen in a box. But um, yeah, I'm thinking like candlesticks for hide and some fake plants. The only like hesitancy I have is that they're fake plants that are plastic and then this is like warm and this is warm. So that's why I say since we're approaching the end of wood stove season, I'll probably put those out there. But for right now, I mean, I could use this as like a bookshelf or something like that but I think I'm just gonna leave it blank because I cleaned it and then I'm gonna put some stuff on it when I find my fake plants but no rush honey. All right y'all it's smoothie time. I got a big heaping dollop of almond butter in there with strawberries, mango, blueberries, protein powder, kefir, and one stalk of celery because I'm feeling crazy and I'm also out of greens. <laughs> Let's try it. It's good, you can't even taste the celery. I feel like it's a good combo to do the kefir with the celery because the kefir is so sour that it's like overpowering that taste completely. Love it. I also put chia seeds in this. I put chia seeds in everything. I can't be stopped. I can't be tamed with the seed. Okay, don't take that out of context. That sounded weirder than I anticipated. All right, I'm boiling some water to make my tea, but I wanted to talk to you guys about this saga that we're in right now. So we have too many plates and bowls for the amount of people who live in this home, you know? And this set, we're not like in love with. We were given these as like a parting gift, basically, when we left the Virginia house. These were the plates that were at that house, but they were getting new plates. So Finley's parents were like, just take them, take the whole set. But then for Christmas a couple years ago, Finley gave me two of these sunflower plates. The other one is in the dishwasher right now. And that whole set that I just showed you, it comes with like eight mugs as well. And I have an entire mug collection, you know, in here. So it's like, we don't really need more mugs. And then for Finley's birthday this year, he got all of these like checkered plates as a gift. And they're so cute. We love them. They're different colors, you know, fun. And they're big. So we're thinking we keep these and the ploles that we have. I was using one of the ploles earlier to eat my salad. My sister gave me those for my birthday a couple years ago. And maybe we just go for like a mismatch vibe. You know what I mean? These are kind of for like sauces and things, just tiny bowls. I have to run my dishwasher in a little bit, but I'll show you the other stuff that we have, even though it's dirty as hell. So these are the ploles. We're gonna keep all of those. I think they're just from Target or something. But then we also have these like ramen bowls that are really nice that I love. So we're gonna keep those donate all of these, but we're running out of actual bolts because we only have three of these. So we were talking today about possibly having to go out and buy some bolts, but <laughs> who knows? All right, I figured I would quickly show you how to make chia pudding. If you don't already know, it's so easy. So I have half a cup of chia seeds dumped in the bottom there and I got a can of coconut milk, honey. Dump that bad boy in. And for this recipe, you can honestly use like whatever milk you would like. I think a lot of people use almond milk for this recipe, but I love a good full fat coconut milk. I feel like it makes it richer and creamier in a way. And I just stir it until all of the chunkers are kind of, you know, more dispersed. And then you're just gonna get some cinnamon if you like cinnamon and just go to town. And this is just something new that I did the other day when I made these. This like does not shake. It gets so, cold in the fridge that it just completely is way more like yogurt in a bottle. But I also add in just like a little squeezed 
dollop of kefir. Honestly, sometimes I feel like this is just enough for me to have it unsweetened, but you could put in honey, you could put in maple syrup, whatever your little heart desires. So that's pretty much it. And then you just put it into two jars, cover it and put it in your refrigerator. That's like the finished pudding. It looks kind of gross, but it's good to me. <laughs> There you have it, folks. Sometimes I'll eat these with like frozen fruit on top or just like a handful of blueberries. You can add some granola on top if you're feeling crazy. I also forgot to say some people include like vanilla extract into the recipe of this, but I never really feel like that's necessary. I'm more of a like use vanilla extract for baking kind of a girl. And this doesn't feel like baking to me. It just feels like a refrigerated pudding. Very exciting. The flowers are starting to bud outside again. Nice. Finley's been in a Spanish music era like me, but we're having a little dump day. We go not even once a month. I would say less than that. If you hear anything in the background, it's either Finley's music or the dishwasher that's running next to me. But I wanted to say when we first moved in here, we were unsure if we had a trash service because we live kind of rurally, but we do have a trash service. Um, it's just like a local one. And some of our neighbors do use it, but we don't use it. And honestly, I was thinking about it the other day. It just makes us feel a little bit more like, I guess, responsible for our waste stream when we see how many bags of trash we're producing and we see how many bags of recycling or whatever. So the recycling's free, obviously, at the dump. And so is the compost, which reminds me I need to get my compost bag. But I have been taking our compost to the dump because we don't have a full, like our ideal compost system <laughs> set up here at the house yet, which probably we'll just do when we get like a tractor and do more of the landscaping projects i think i know where i want the compost piles to go which is like in this upper part up here where the orchards and the raised beds are gonna go but for right now i'm just like taking it to the dump because they do have a good compost system there and whenever i try to bury our compost here then the pigs dig it up and eat it so it's just unfortunate it's like no we don't want that anyway in vermont composting and recycling is free and then they charge you by weight for your trash as well as your scrap metal which is so weird to us because we're like shouldn't they be paying us for our scrap metal, like it's valuable. You know what I mean? It's just so strange. Our dump in Oregon used to pay for scrap metal. That's why we were like, I don't know why it's like this. And the dump guy, when we asked him, he was like, I don't know why it's like that either. Probably something to do with the gas or something to haul it all off, but whatever. Anyway, so we're having our dump day and we're gonna go there and then we're gonna go antiquing and we're gonna get groceries and do all that kind of stuff. But Finley just pulled the truck around to the basement to get the trash out of the basement as well. We probably go to the dump maybe once every two months or so and just accumulate everything and separate out like feed bags because the feed bags for the pigs, most of them we gift to this lady who makes tote bags out of feed bags and then she sells them at the local farmer's market. It's very cute, so love that for us. And yeah, it's honestly just cheaper for us to go to the dump rather than paying for a monthly trash service because they don't charge you by weight, they just charge you a monthly fee for pick up and drop off, you know, like a weekly service or however often you do it. Anyway, I've just been loving the dump life, so <laughs> wanted to talk about it, I guess. And uh, we're gonna head on the town today. I honestly can't remember if I showed this in a vlog or just on Instagram. I believe it was just on Instagram, but I had Finley build me <laughs> this little shoe shelf for the entryway here, just so when you come in the house, you can just immediately take your shoes off put them on the shelf and it's been really great. So I think for our bedroom, so, oh, what I wanted to say is this is made out of the wood that we took from the bedroom renovation. It was just a nice upcycle project. So I think for our closet in the bedroom, I'm gonna have him make me one that's like double wide and like four times as tall <laughs> for all my shoes. But I think it's cute. I also like the mismatched colors of wood. That's always my fave. You know I love a dual tone moment. Also, I put out our Easter decorations. Finley gave me this last year for my birthday after I <laughs> pointed it out, I think at like Michael's or Joanne or something like that. And it's me in Rue just having a little mommy daughter egg riding moment. There's an inside joke behind it, but it wouldn't make any sense to explain. But when we moved into this house, this was left behind. This cute little Easter kind of table decoration. So I just put it on the table. I said, why the hell not? Another fun thing about going to the dump is that the guy at the cash register, he gives the dogs treats. Right, Larry? So you always want to come 
That is so fun. That doesn't normally happen with trash pickup, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Exciting! Okay, we're coming to Millie's. This is our third time that we've tried to come here. It's always been closed. So we're very, we called ahead and made sure that they were open because the dump was closed, which is a flop. Is there a cool. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, rocking chair. Look at that little stool. That's cute. That's nice. Oh, lots of rugs. We don't need any rugs. We have too many rugs right now. Yeah, this would be a really good entryway. First, we have to make the entryway. Yeah, it's not nice enough to buy ahead of time. That's probably a long way off. Look at this guy. Oh, Speedway. We didn't even get enough snow to use ours this year. Maybe we could put Rue in that little baby carriage. Whoa, that is a crazy looking skull. Wow, that's really cool. It's probably really heavy, but I've always wanted a bird bath. Did you hear what I said about Humpty Dumpty? Yeah, what did you say? <laughs> I just said, apparently, according to my mom, it's giving me Humpty Dumpty potato chips. Holy <laughs> shit, bro. <laughs> On one of my last phone calls with my mom, she was like, yeah, we don't have, you know, since we have such short torsos, when we get pregnant, we just look like Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> and I was like, we? Look at all these spools of thread. They have a lot of stuff here. What do you think about this? Maybe? Oh, I like that a lot. He needs a new lampshade for his know, bedside table. I don't know, last time I really made a horrible decision, so I don't really trust myself. There's a lot of Christmas decorations here if we ever need them. I saw a TikTok the other day that was like, I think we should all just agree that not a single Christmas decoration needs to be made ever again. There's been enough made that we could all buy them over and over and recycle them at thrift stores and all that kind of stuff. I just thought it was so funny. This is a whole Christmas lamp. We totally got the loot at Millie's. Millie was very nice. I got this little stool to go with my rocking chair. And then we got this table lamp for me and bocce and a book and some other fun stuff. Another beautiful night in Brattleboro. We went to Echo Restaurant and Lounge for dinner. We hadn't been there since like 2021, but it was delicious and terrific, just as I remembered it. I got some groceries. This is going to be a chaotic grocery haul, okay? I mean chaotic because I got so much produce. I'm in my produce era right now. I'm eating so many bell peppers with hummus as snacks and like apples and peanut butter and stuff. So I got a ton of those. I got like lemons and limes and cauliflower because I want to try making cauliflower rice. Never tried to make it before. I've only like bought it frozen and stuff. And then carrots also for hummus. And underneath there I have celery and lettuce and some other things. I always get this power blend for like smoothies and salads and stuff. I got two heavy whipping creams because they don't sell like a big <laughs> jug of it, but I'm gonna try to make homemade like sorbet in my, cause I've just been loving my smoothies ever since I got my blender back and I'm gonna try to make something to like freeze instead of having ice cream. And I got some berries for that, which I'll show you in a second. Ton of eggs. I'm going through a lot of spinach and feta egg cups, which are in here. I have like one every day and then Normally I get like sheep yogurt or goat yogurt or something like that, but I'm trying this one. I don't know. I'm just trying it all, honey. Our favorite milk. This is the berry mix that I got today. The triple berry like antioxidant blend from Wyman's. I also just got like frozen cut spinach for, what recipe did I get this for? I bought this for a reason and I don't remember why. I also got Finley some chicken and sage breakfast sausages. And I think that's it for the frozen stuff. We have to eat up some of our frozen stuff. We have too much. And speaking of having too much, we have too many bulk brown bags. So I just went through and labeled them all again. So I'll like actually use them up this week, hopefully. Not use them up, but like start dwindling them down because I just don't have enough clear jars to see them all in. But I did put some more like chia seeds in jars just so I can try to find all of that. But I also, even though it doesn't seem like it, I just organized this to Finley's section of all of his faves. Did I buy any of this today? Oh, these, because he loves these. Ginger candy. So that was like the one thing that I got 
for him at the store. Well, he picked it up, but I realized that I accidentally double bought buns. Like we do not go through this many buns in a week. So I need to uh, invite some friends over for a hot dog party, apparently. I also bought some bulk dark chocolate ginger, cause that sounds fun. Dark chocolate ginger, why not? And then speaking of dark chocolate, this is like my go-to dessert. Very dark chocolate with almond butter. So I got more almond butter cause I was running low on this one. So I got that one. I got bulk almonds. What's in here? Oats or coconut? Coconut. Oh, cause I wanted to make my own granola. This is the thing, okay? I have had some troubles with finding a granola that I like at my co-op. Like whenever I get them, I'm just kind of like, eh, I don't know. This isn't really that good. So I think I'm just gonna try to make my own. So I got some like bulk ingredients for that. But I think that's it. Oh no, I have more produce. See, this is what I'm saying. Chaotic grocery haul. I got too much produce, it's seeming. But I do have an avocado every day. I just have to wait for these to ripen. And then I got two more onions. I already had two at home and some garlic. So that's the haps. Also, I forget to say this during my grocery haul, but I am gonna test out some of these fun little recipes for you. And if they are good and freezable for postpartum, and I like them or I'm eating them a lot, I'll share them with you. Like the chia pudding, love it, easy, two ingredients basically. Well, three with the cinnamon, four with the kefir. So <laughs> I lied, but yeah, I mean, I tried the like spinach and feta egg cups this week and I really enjoyed those. And I think I already explained how to make them, but any of these other recipes that I try and, you know, stick in my life, I will share them with you, probably in like a nesting video or something like that. We could nest and freeze stuff together. That sounds fun. But I still am interested in any of your recipes that you wanna leave me down below. Don't forget. I would like to say that if anybody was worried yesterday about me not getting the chance to wear my skirt as a shirt, just don't worry, okay? Because it doubles as a shirt as well. This is from Psychic Outlaw. I've had it since like fall time, but it has these little ties so you can make it into a dolly dress it's called. And I'm short. Keep in mind, if I'm 5'3 and I wear this genuinely as a dress, we're gonna have a Marilyn Monroe moment, okay? Whoop, whoops, that's crazy. So I'm wearing some uh, hard label pants underneath these. Part of the label went out of business along with another one of my favorite like sustainably made garment companies called Jonesy. Jonesy makes like bras and underwear and I used to be obsessed with them and I have so many pairs of their things but I was thinking about them a couple of months ago and I was like whatever happened to Jonesy? And then I went and looked up their Instagram and the woman who started the company was like I'm taking a break. I don't know if I'm ever coming back. <laughs> so what can you do? I'm glad I got them while I could, because their underwear is great, especially in pregnancy, very comfortable. Anyway, that was a side note and tangent, but yeah, Heart of the Label is also out of business. What can you do? But my turtleneck underneath this is just thrifted, but I like the fit today. I've never worn this before and it's cute. Okay guys, I just let the dogs out and when I opened the door, I was like, what the heck? There's some pink tissue paper popping up on the seat of Finley's truck that's like parked up right outside of the door. And I was like, Finley, <laughs> there's a present in your truck. And he was like, a present? What are you talking about? I was like, are you pulling my leg right now? <laughs> I really don't know Because <laughs> his mom like loves Easter. I was just confused. I don't know. But this is what's in the bag. And there's no note on it. The dream grow light and lullaby soother. <laughs> that's pretty cute. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. And then a baby super soft blanket from Tahari. Oh my God. <laughs> Who gave us this? Look at these little shorts. Oh my God. Yeah, Rabbit bear. The, the pigs left it, you think? They could have gone shopping. There's literally no car. I'm like, who drove up our driveway? Yeah, Opened your car door and put it in there. What a mystery. Maybe it was one of our neighbors. All right, folks, I wanted to say that I found the culprit of who left the mystery Easter bunny bag in our truck. And it was our neighbor, Stacy. So sweet of her. We actually saw her yesterday on the way to the dump. We saw her walking her dog down the road and we were like, hey, How's it going? And she, we had given her a Christmas card. So she got to asking about the baby and what we were having and everything like that. Because when I was theorizing about, you know, who could have left this gift for us, I was like, they have to know that we're having a girl because they gave us that like little strawberry 
tank top and bloomer set, you know? And we had just told her that we were having a girl. So I was like, you know what? I actually bet it's Stacy. And so I texted her and she was like, yes, that was me. I won't go on too much of a tangent here, but I just wanted to say, it's been a very chill Sunday here. I've just been editing this vlog and eating snacks and just trying to prepare a little bit of like a glimpse at the next few weeks for myself. And that's really normally what I do on Sundays is I look at like the weeks ahead and I'm like, oh, okay, we have what coming up this week? Another midwife appointment. Now that I'm in my third trimester, I have to see my midwife every other week. So it's really, <laughs> It's just become so frequent. But yes, I do have another midwife appointment this week and also so many birthdays. This is like March just starts the month of birthdays in my life. Not just for myself. My birthday's on March 24th. If you didn't know, I'm going to be turning 27. Very exciting. And I already know what I'm going to do for my like 27 lessons I learned at 27 video this year, which I kind of hinted and alluded to in this video, but I don't think that you'll be able to infer what it is. I don't know. Maybe you will, but I'll film that this week and prepare some of my lessons. I think I have most of them written out except for the last like four or five. And over the weekend, I've just been kind of brainstorming about what exactly I want to do for my birthday, like with friends and stuff, because we just have a small handful of friends, you know, but we have them. So that's great. But I will say as my mama Meg to be gift from Finley this year, I'm getting a massage and a facial from him. Well, by professionals, but he's gifting them to me. So I already scheduled those and I'm going to get those done this week as well. And I'm very, very excited just for a nice prenatal massage and a maternity facial as well. That's what it's called because you know sometimes you can get like breakouts in pregnancy my pregnancy skin has honestly been pretty good my skin has been like pretty normal and consistent but um you know just random breakouts elsewhere but I do want to talk to the facialist about my little dilated pore that I have between my eyebrows that's been there since like I feel like the beginning of 2022. I don't even know how it happened, but it's there. Anyway, I'm just going on a couple of tangents now and I need to get my ass on the treadmill to walk my mile because I have my belly band here. I'm gonna strap up. I'm so tired today, so is Finley. We just feel like wiped for some reason, but luckily it's a chill day. So we're just kind of resting and we'll get back after it this week with lots of random appointments, things to do and stuff to prepare for little baby on the way. Thank you for watching this little weekend or so in my life. It was a couple days in my life and I'm just trying to be more casual and less in my head about content when it comes to this time in my life because just all of my tasks and appointments and preparations and all of those things like that takes up a really large amount of my life and so might as well just show it to you and not be like I can't talk about the baby or anything like that people are gonna get bored it's like okay well that's just what I've been up to so love you guys Thanks for watching and I will just see you in my next video. And when I'm not on here, you can find me on Patreon. All right, stay smiling.